والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful we praise Allah creator of the heavens and the earth and we send peace and blessings to all of the prophets and messengers and especially to our last beloved prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi salatu wasalam and we begin with the greeting words of the righteous assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to be muslim in the month of ramadan we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to gain countless rewards in this blessed time and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being part of the ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam this ummah has spread across the planet and so there are people in the mountains in Mongolia in Tibet in the deserts in the Sahara of West Africa in the deserts of Arabia in Southeast Asia in the jungles in America in the Midwest throughout the planet there are people who are fasting who are praying who are giving their sadaqa and if we could imagine the earth in its rotation in its relationship to the sun that constantly as time changes as the light changes in different parts of the world also people's actions are changing so if we look at the planet all together we will find that in the month of ramadan there is simultaneous action going on somewhere in the world there is a body of muslims who are fasting or praying or giving charity to the poor or calling to the good and forbidding evil there are people who are trying to correct their lives purify themselves this is a great blessing and this is part of the special quality of the month of ramadan in relationship to the last messenger muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam we also know that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came not only to the arabic speaking people but he came to the non arabs he came not only to human beings but he came to the jinn he came to creatures uh, created from smokeless fire and through him the quran was revealed to them surah al jinn a chapter specially for the jinn and so the spirit world another frequency is also part of the month of ramadan so the blessings in this month the virtues of this month spread throughout creation as we say alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin we say all praises to allah lord of all the worlds so allah azza wa jal is the lord of human beings the lord of the jinn the lord of the insects the lord of the planets the lord of every living being every part of the universe all universes all parts of creation with this power and might allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful to us to give us a chance to communicate with him to praise him and to be part of the ummah of the last prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not speak from himself he spoke from above seven heavens and in his words there is great wisdom if we look at some of these ahadith we find virtues that are so important in understanding this month in one hadith reported in sahih muslim the translation goes that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the five daily prayers a believer performs attending juma one after another and fasting one ramadan after another are an expiation and atonement for all of the major sins he has accumulated from in between them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took it a step further and he informed us man sama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban غفر الله ما تقدم من ذنبي whoever fasts in the month of ramadan with iman cherishing his faith and with confident expectation in the reward from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have all of his sins forgiven so ramadan is a time of ghufran it is a time of the forgiveness of the sins it is a great blessing to be a muslim because surely as human beings we are committing sins every day we commit sins with our tongues sins with our eyes sins with our hands 
We walk into sinful places. We think about sinful things. And Ramadan is a chance for us to have all of this taken away from our scrolls, from our book that would be delivered to us on the day of resurrection. So we are blessed to be part of the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and blessed to have a way out that comes to us yearly in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu also said that, um, and he said this while describing uh, some of the mysterious scenes that he saw in a vision he said, I saw a man belonging to my community, panting from thirst. He approached a fountain of water to drink from, but alas, he was driven away from it. Then his fasting of Ramadan came to his rescue. It offered him a drink from the same fountain which quenched his thirst. In another hadith reported in At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said, on the arrival of the first night of Ramadan, the shayateen, the devilish and rebellious jinn, are locked up in chains. And the doors of Jahannam, the doors of hell, are shut down. And the doors of heaven are opened. And an angelic announcer, an angel will declare, O seeker of good, come forward. O seeker of evil, hold and restrain yourself. Allah frees souls from hellfire every single night in the month of Ramadan. So the blessings of this month are countless. And as we see in this tradition, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has informed us that on a spiritual level, the air is clear that the evil jinn, the evil shayateen are locked up. And we know from the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ that every person has a qareen. That is a type of jinni, an evil uh, spirit which is around us, that whispers to us, that tempts us. Some people even hear voices inside of their head. And they even ask the Prophet ﷺ, so what about you? If every human being has a qareen, then what about you, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, even me, but mine has accepted Islam. So, we know that our Qareen has not accepted Islam. And we are blessed that that evil force, those sounds that we hear, those bad thoughts that we hear, will be taken away during this month. So on a spiritual level, this month is clear. And it is important for a person who is taking hisab, a person who is taking account of themselves. Some people blame their actions upon voices that they hear. Some people blame their actions upon forces outside of their control, but in the month of Ramadan, it is between the human being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever is within our hearts, whatever is in our lives, it is clear in this month. The month has given us a special position with Allah azza wa jal, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so the blessings within this hadith show us countless mercies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to the believers. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, has shown us in a hadith Qudsi that all of the actions of the son of Adam are for himself. Except fasting, that is for me and I will especially reward for this. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that in this month there are special blessings. That the relationship with the Creator has changed. The evil forces are chained up. And so we are now in a position that we can communicate what is in our minds, what is in our actions. Each individual, let every one of us take account of the year that passed. What did we do? What thoughts came in our mind? How did we spend our wealth? Did we give our wealth in the path of Allah? Did we give to the poor? Did we help to build a masjid? Did we help to, 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 to alleviate the suffering of some of the orphans? What did we do with our time? Did we spend all of our time in uh, making material things? 
Did we work only for the dunya or did we work for the dunya and the akhirah, this life and the next? How did we spend our time? How, what did we do with the blessings of our bodies? If we were strong people, did we use our strength to help the weak? If we were intelligent people, if Allah blessed us with uh, intelligence and knowledge, did we use that intelligence in order to gain more money in this world, to gain wealth, or did we take some of our intelligence and give it to people who are not so fortunate? This is a time of account taking. This is a time when our minds are clear, our bodies are clear, the spiritual world is clear, and we don't have to worry about the cares and chores that, of, of, that people go through in making their breakfast, in looking for their lunch, in thinking about snacks during the day. No. We're blessed now. Our body is functioning on its own strength. And it is remarkable how well our body can fu function without food. And so that is part of the clearness. Even the doctors tell us that in fasting, our blood system is cleared. So the very blood that is pumping through our body has been purified and it clears the brain. So Ramadan, in a sense, is a clearing house. It is a time for us to be able to look at the past, go on to the future. We can look at our sins. We can gain forgiveness uh, from uh, the wrongs that we have done. And then we can prepare ourselves for the year to come. This is one of the great darajat, one of the great levels given to the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And so it is so much of a blessing to be a follower of this last messenger. It is so much of a mercy to be a Muslim that this body that normally holds us down, this body that normally calls to us for food, that normally distracts us with sexual desire, the desire is turned off. The need for food is turned off. And the spiritual part comes to the surface. So this is the time when we are able to rise to a level higher than the angels. Now we can see why Allah has made us fi ahsani taqweem, in the best of forms, even better than the angels, if we rise to the spiritual level. But Allah also lowers us to asfala safilin. He lowers us to the lowest of the low if we let desire take over our lives. So Ramadan has blessed us. Allah inshallah will bless us. Let us keep to our commitment. Fast in this month and hold tight to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I leave you in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.